Hello everyone and thanks for tuning into my channel. I'm rethinking my idea of starting this in the paddock as it's very very bright and sunny but here we are with the ponies. It's my day off so I have had, I'm a bit late coming out but I thought I would um, talk about the feed, what feeds I do. So this is the morning feed. Um, these two are actually in the same small paddock at the moment because Andrew is working on Colm's yard um, because as I will go on to explain in a little while both my ponies are very very good very good doers and uh, in the springtime they need to be kept off the sugary grass so um, we have built and I did I think I did put some of this in another vlog uh, we have built some smaller yards for them with no grass so I can lock them up during the day and uh, yeah keep them off the grass for a few hours so I normally put them in in the morning and then Andrew lets them out uh, late in the afternoon for me so this is um, Bella's shelter and her yard and yeah Andrew's in the process of building the other one I might show you that um, he's just putting the wire on so it shouldn't be too far away and then Colm will have his his yard as well so there they are in the background so I'm just going to collect up these buckets and I'll take you in the shed and um, explain what I'm feeding well welcome to my little feed spot <laughs> it's not very tidy I probably should have tidied up before I got started with this but never mind this is how it is so um, I shall talk a little bit about morning feeds so and I'm not sure how I'm going to do this because buckets are on the ground obviously but I start off with um, a product called Super Fibre Mash. So I use all um, benchmark feeds, I just like my little hummus bucket. So this holds about 500 grams of pellets. So um, the Super Fibre Mash, as you can see, I don't know if I can get that up, is in a pellet form. So this is strictly just fibre. So there's not, well, I suppose there is some minerals and um, vitamins in there but it's generally just a fibre product. So I feed this to Bella instead of chaff because chaff is a bit higher in starch and sugar and this is extremely low in starch and sugar and just really, really high in fibre. So that goes in her bucket. Now these, pellet, these first lot of pellets that I put in do get soaked, so they expand. So you need to put probably like 500 grams and then I put in three times as much water and it will expand. I'll do, um, I'll do Colm's as well. So Colm has a different product. Um, he has a uh, what we call perfect mash. I did have him on 500 grams as well but I've actually cut his back a bit because now the spring grass is here he's getting a little bit on the big side and I'm not doing much work with him. So I give him half of that little hummus container. And again, that one gets soaked and it's in a pellet form just like the super fiber mash. But the perfect mash has a bit more um, nutrients, minerals, vitamins, probiotics, prebiotics, all the good stuff. So I can give him literally just that. Um, he doesn't need anything else with it. So I'll just add I've got a, an old saucepan that I use. So I'll add some water to both of those. To that, I add in the morning rose hip. Um, so I've put them on rose hip granules, um, which I get from a great company called Country Herbs. And the rose hip granules I started feeding last spring because Colm had a really, really bad runny nose and a cough and a real bad respiratory problem. And rosehip is really good for allergies. So they both get a scoop of rosehip in the morning. So the rosehip granules go in. Yeah, so it's really helping him with his um, snotty nose. I give them to Bella as well, just to be on the safe side. It's also really good apparently for um, joints and just overall good well-being for their immune system. So that's the rose hip. And then Bella has um, brewer's yeast. So she has a quarter of a cup in total over the day. So they get fed twice a day. So I give her 
I don't know what half of a quarter is, I should know. <laughs> um, so she gets a scoop of the brewer's yeast. And I spoke a little bit about the brewer's yeast in my last vlog, just briefly. But the brewer's yeast has been a new addition and it's made a huge impact um, for Bella's overall well-being. So here goes the story, there's always a story. Um, over oh, probably a year, two years, I've been doing, as us horse people do, um, doing a lot of investigation because I was having a lot of issues with Bella. Um, just her being really, really agitated when I groom her, tack her up, um, not wanting to go forward, very uncomfortable, just not a happy girl at all. So we went down the whole rabbit hole of, um, you know, is this a pain problem? So I had a chiropractor, obviously. I had her scoped for ulcers last year, and it turns out that she did have low grade um, ulcers in there. So we treated her for the ulcers. And then I, it, there, there was a slight improvement, but it still wasn't great. Um, although I, know, I knew then that the ulcers had been taken care of, so that was a good thing. We also had her on a hormone supplements who suppress her coming into season. Um, and they put a lot of racehorses on that, but it was a pretty full on um, treatment. And the stuff that you use, the medication, oh, I can't get my words out today. Uh, the medication I felt was a bit harsh, like you had to wear gloves to use it. Um, and you know, suppressing her, her seasons like that, I, it's not really a natural way of going. Um, it did improve things slightly, but again, not major, not majorly. So I did keep her on that for the whole course. Um, and then I took her off that and I was giving her a more natural supplement, which was called Stroppy Mare, <laughs> which is very appropriate. That had a little bit more impact. So that was just mainly herbs like chamomile, uh, red clover leaf, all the lovely things to help soothe um, your women's problems. And it did, it did help a bit. We then changed the saddle um, because she had changed shape quite a bit and the saddle wasn't fitting. So the saddle change made a difference. So there was obviously an issue there. I also changed my girth. Um, so she now has the prestige girth, which has a big, uh, almost like a donut underneath. So it disperses the pressure of the girth. And she really likes that. She seems to like that. I wish they could talk to us. It would make life so much easier. Um, so that was that. But what we did find is that the when the sugar changes in the grass or in her feed, that seemed to really impact her. So there was one day I took her to Pony Club and mum gave her oat and hay. <laughs> Uh, we had the oat and hay here for the cows and mum had filled up her hay net with oat and hay and she was not a happy camper at all. So um, I realised then that she had had a major sugar spike and yeah, her, she was muscle sore, she didn't want to be touched. Um, so the sugars play a big part. <clears throat> so I haven't had her officially diagnosed but all the research that I've done, which is very extensive, I have come to realise I think she is EMS, which is equine metabolic syndrome. So she can't cope with the sugars. So in my mind, if she was a human, she would probably be a diabetic. So her insulin levels don't work properly. So I have to be really, really mindful of her sugar intake. Having worked that out, life has been a little bit better. Um, but then I've got on to using a lady called um, Ellie and Equine Alignment, I think is her business name. And um, she's been treating Bella and she does body work. So Bella's not a big fan of the chiropractor. Um, I don't think she likes that form of adjustment. She gets quite tense when the chiropractor's here. <laughs> and I suppose when I say, I wish they could talk to you, they do talk to you if you learn how to listen. So that has been a big learning curve for me, is really learning how to read her body language, read her signs and listen to her. And I think when you do that, the horses really respond and you build up a great trust. So it's been, it's been good in a way and I always try and see the positives in things. So the fact that it was frustrating that, um, that we were having these issues you know, there were days when I would just cry because I'd be like, Bella, I just want to help you and I don't know how to help you. But now I do read her body language and read her cues, I think. Um, so anyway, I got onto Ellie. 
um, who does more kind of trigger point um, massage and I've learned a lot. I'd really like to do a proper course so that I work out what I'm actually, I don't know what my microphone's doing there, what I'm actually doing and what muscles I'm working with. Um, <clears throat> but anyway, Ellie does massage, she does almost like trigger point and it's a bit of Bowen and um, it seems to have really made a massive difference to Bella. So she is in a much more comfortable place within her body. I was also telling Ellie how I had changed her feed regime um, because I was finding I was doing a lot of work with her, a lot of lunging, a lot of pole work and a lot of riding, but I wasn't able to really build a good top line. So, and because Bella has always been overweight and I struggle with the weight, which again is an EMS problem, um, I've always restricted her feed intake. So I, I'm getting all out of whack here. So I've also got another lady that I deal with called Jo, who is a rep for Benchmark Feeds, and she's wonderful, very approachable. Um, anyway, so I gave her a call and I said, look, this is what's happening. I wanna build more top line. I wanna support Bella with her feed because she's doing a lot more work. So she suggested a different feed regime. So we've upped the amount of feed, which Bella's really happy about. And um, yeah, and introduce, I'll, I'll I'm getting off track. I'll introduce you to what else she's having. So, cause that's all soaked now. So she also has another pellet. And this freaked me out the first time I had to feed her this much. She has a whole kilo of um, cool, it's called cool ads. So again, it's low in sugar, low in starch, um, but very high in fiber and all the um, minerals. So it's like, it's a pellet. I think you can soak this as well, but I tend to put it on top so she gets that bit of crunch. Um, so she has a kilo of this morning and night. So that goes into her bucket. Of course, Colm doesn't get anything like that. <laughs> um, and then she also has, which we've introduced to up the protein, is she has lupins. So these are extruded lupins. So again, very low in sugar and starch. And that's what they look like, the little, um, yeah. So these are the lupins, extruded lupins. I must find out, I don't know what the process is and what they take out of the extruded lupins. lupins. But that's what she has. And then we'll get back to the brewer's yeast. So Ellie, I was talking to Ellie about this increase in protein and trying to build muscle. And then she explained to me how, as I, I already knew, chestnuts have a thinner skin than other, than other horses. So they are more sensitive. They also have more skin irritations and um, problem skin. So the other thing that goes with the chestnut is quite often they have, um, like all, all horses, like we do when we exercise, we get a lactic acid buildup in the muscles, but for some reason chestnut horses aren't able to expel that as easily or use that within their body. So it builds up in the muscles and they can get a lot more muscle sore. So she suggested we do either bicarb, yeah, bicarb soda or brewer's yeast. Um, and the fact that she has had low grade ulcers before, we decided to go with the brewer's yeast because the bicarb soda might've been a little bit too much for her tummy. So um, yeah, so we've started her on the brewer's yeast and it has made a huge difference. So the brewer's yeast is pretty much all your B vitamins and also um, amino acids and all those good stuff, which I was gonna read up on and then I didn't. Um, yeah, so it improves in the digestion of the fiber in the horse's diet and it's also high in vitamin B, uh, which helps calm the nervous system and, um, and just helps support that muscle. Um, anyway, for whatever reason, it's working. So I'm very happy and I'm happy that my belly is happy. So yeah, there you go, I've raved on now for 13 minutes. <laughs> I hope I haven't bored you all. Um, anyway, so that's Bella's feed done. Colm's got his super fibre mash and his little, his um, rose hip. Then I also do give him just a little bit of um, loosened chaff. So uh, just to add with that super fibre mash is a little bit of loosened chaff. And loosened chaff is also got a little bit of protein in it. So it just gives him that little bit more, but it's not as much protein as what Bella's getting. So that goes into his little 
bucket and I keep everything in these bins. I'd love to have a gorgeous, you know, feed set up with the lovely, uh, you can get these beautiful containers with the lift up lids and stuff, but you know, that's just more money, isn't it? And I'd rather spend money elsewhere. So I use um, these, these drums to store my feed in because we have, um, I, we have mice. So I do try and keep on top of them with pest control, but uh, yeah, otherwise they're gonna eat all my feed and that's not cost effective. So they do also have, um, the horses do also have some meadow hay, which I was lucky enough to get some low sugar meadow hay. And I do give them a hay net, particularly when they're shut into their smaller yards. Um, my hay stock is going down and we have had an issue here in Australia, um, in, in South Australia of lack of hay, but we are coming into the hay cutting season. Although in saying that, we had a pretty dry winter, so I'm not sure what the hay situation is going to be like. So it's a bit of a problem for some people. Anyhow, I'll get on and give the ponies their food because they'll be patiently waiting or impatiently waiting because it is a bit later than what they normally get fed. You can I come in? We want Bella in. Come on, Belly. Good girl. Come on, call me. Oh, she's grumpy. Carrot. <laughs> Good boy. That's our morning feed um, regime at the moment. And uh, I'm just going to take Belly's rug off because it's actually quite a nice day today. So yeah, I hope you got something out of it. I think it's always important to share our knowledge. And like I said, I have been doing a lot of research and it's been quite the journey, but I think we're in a really good place at the moment, which I'm thankful for, because um, it means that Bella's comfortable um, and also Colm's comfortable. So the rose hip's really helping his allergy problem. And uh, yeah, we're heading into daylight saving shortly. So I will um, be able to get cracking and do some work on him. Sorry, I'm trying to take this rug off and talk at the same time and I'm not doing a very good job because I've now undone buckles I wasn't supposed to undo. Never mind. Oh, you're quite warm, Belly. So until the next video, I hope you stay safe and well and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.